Guys, welcome to today's video. I sincerely apologize for being MIA for like a month. Uh, my wife and I just had our second baby. So as you can imagine, it's been a little busy around the household. I am excited to share this video with you guys though. So please make sure to like and subscribe, all that good stuff. The channel's growing, we're over 7,000 subscribers now, so thank you all so much for your support. Let's get right into the video. So, you've always wanted solar on your vehicle to power your adventures and ensure that you have plenty of electricity to keep your devices charged and to run your equipment. But you see all these videos telling you how quote unquote simple installing solar is, while the setup looks like this from a previous video of mine. Now I still maintain that my solar power setup is pretty simple. However, I can definitely understand how someone who has never worked with wiring before could be intimidated. That's why I wanted to show you the absolute simplest possible solar power setup. Normally, you need a solar panel, solar charge controller, DC fuse block for power distribution to accessories like USB and 12 volt cigarette lighter style outlets, and the assorted wiring to connect all these components. With the dock to prepare, 100 amp hour power max lithium iron phosphate battery with the max hub which essentially makes this battery into an all-in-one power station with 1280 watt hours of power no other power station can come close to that amount of power for the price the max hub is an mppt solar charge controller and a USB A, USB C, and 12 volt cigarette lighter type outlet for all your electronics and accessories, such as like fridges, which a 1280 watt hour battery could power for quite a while. If you need AC power, it's as simple as adding an inverter via the two battery terminals. Dr. Prepare recommends a 1000 watt inverter for this product. If you're looking to skip all the frills of most power stations on the market like LED displays and mobile phone connectivity and just want the most power possible for the least amount of money, this is the setup I recommend and Dr. Prepare kindly gave my subscribers an extra 7% off, which works out to about 30 bucks. And that code is Laura7. That's Laura like Lexus Off Road Adventures and 7. So definitely go ahead and claim that discount. First, in order to prepare my vehicle for solar panel mounting, I need to start by cleaning all this dirt and pollen off my vehicle. So I took my boy through the only local touchless car wash that fits my 7 foot 1 inch rig. He was scared at first, but now he can't stop talking about it and is asking to do it again. Up. Uh, nothing here, but we're about to go in there. You ready, buddy? Don't be scared. It's okay. <laughs> So once we have a semi-clean surface, we could start unboxing everything. This is the cheapest 100 watt solar panel I could find at like 120 bucks. It's not perfect, it has some splotches of silicone around the top, but I don't really care. Here are some of the specs on it if you're interested. This is the star of the show though. The Dr. Prepare 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate solar battery. Lithium iron phosphate is one of the more stable chemistries that you can use. You can mount it in any orientation you want and it's totally safe. So here are the materials that we'll need. And I'm gonna leave all these linked in the description so you know. Beyond the battery and solar panel, you just need some of these other items. It's not a very extensive list as you can see you guys, there's not going to be a whole lot of wiring that we do, all we do is crimp and connect one thing. And I always like to use these uh, super clean cleaning products in uh, diluted bottles and stuff like that. They're available at like all sorts of stores so I just, they're kind of just my go-to. And once I've extra cleaned the mounting surface after getting the preliminary car wash clean, then I start laying out the vinyl. Now, this is not going to be a cosmetic quality vinyl wrap, okay? Uh, some of you may cringe at the roughness with which I mount this, but my goal here is to show that it doesn't take a rocket scientist to do this sort of thing. 
A lot of videos make the learning curve for mounting vinyl seem really high. I want to do the opposite for you. So I didn't use a single measurement at all. I literally just did rough sketches in vinyl and then just cut it out to the closest I could see. And I'm starting out the wrap by just sticking down the corners and starting to take the wax paper out. And if you realize at some point near the beginning, oh shoot, I messed up and I wasn't paying attention, you can always unstick it and restick it down as I'll show you. Again, this is not a cosmetic wrap. So having minor flaws doesn't really matter to me. All I want is to get a good stick onto the roof so that I can mount my solar panel to it without really affecting the rooftop tent or whatever other mounting surface you choose at all. Those of you who have been watching the channel know that I previously mounted a solar panel on my hood and that has been totally reliable ever since and it's been over a year. So as you can see, I'm unsticking a mistake where there are a ton of huge bubbles and then re-sticking it back down. Now there are still some minor bubbles here because we literally did this in five minutes. You guys, this is not uh, not a super difficult process. If you have some bubbles, it's all getting covered up anyway. So it doesn't really matter. I know some of you in the comments might get mad at me for not doing it the proper way, quote unquote, whatever that is. But all I'm interested in is having it be a reliable setup. And this is getting covered up anyways, again, so it doesn't really matter to me if there's a couple bubbles. Now, this is an important part. When you get your heavy duty outdoor double-sided tape, just make a full rectangle around the solar panel and do some strips in the middle. The rectangle around the outside is just to keep water from intruding from the outside underneath the solar panel, just because you want to limit the amount of moisture that is under there. Um, if some gets in, I think it's okay, it's not a big deal, but you just want to limit that. So create a nice seal on the outside, it's like a gasket for any other part or an o-ring. Um, so then, after that, you're just going to line up the solar panel as best as you can with where you want it to be, and lay it down. And this one you cannot unstick very easily. So try to get it right the first time. If not, you know, it's not the end of the world. Try to unstick it and restick it down, but it might be more effort than it's worth at that point, And you might have to get some more rolls of expensive double-sided outdoor tape. So once that's done, now I'm gonna show you why it doesn't really matter how exact the bottom portion of the vinyl is. It's because we're going around the bottom vinyl anyways with this outside vinyl wrap. And again, this is to limit or eliminate water intrusion possibilities. So on the far side here, I'm laying down a strip of vinyl to ensure that no water gets in the right side of the solar panel. So I'm just putting a little bit of vinyl on top of the panel and then sticking the rest down in that kind of trough between the solar panel and the edge of the rooftop tent. And you'll see what that looks like in a second. And again, no measurements. I'm just doing all this in real time. I see where I want to end the vinyl and I kind of cut it off there. No big deal. Okay, and this is what the final product looks like. If there's going to be any water there, it can just sit there and as soon as the car moves, it'll kind of go right off the roof like a uh, water drain should. And I am vinyl wrapping over the wires this time. Last time I didn't really do this. And you do see some sun fading on that lower quality plastic down there. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of in, uh, increase the longevity of this solar panel. So I'm gonna cover that stuff up and see if it helps at all. I'll report back with that. You don't have to cover this, but again, this is at the front end of the tent. So I don't want wires flapping around and making a bunch of noise anyway. So I figure vinyl wrapping over the wires will prevent any excess wear in addition to noise. Now it's time to get our 20 feet of 10 gauge wire ready to go, okay? And to start out with, I cover the solar panel with a blanket. Now the reason for that is this is a solar panel and it is now producing a significant voltage. So you wanna be safe, just cover the panel up with something so that you don't run the risk of any shocks or short circuits or anything like that. And then connected it up uh, to the uh, MC4 connectors there and I'm going to start routing wiring and this is gonna be a good half to uh, three quarters of this project is just routing wiring to start off with I'm putting it through the front of my roof rack 
where I have done some other wiring projects in the past for my roof lighting. Okay, and as you can see, we have a nice hidden uh, wire routing and it's just kind of going off onto the ground. So beyond that, the next step is gonna be to open up the hood and see where we're gonna go from here. And I'm gonna show you that we're going to route it underneath this cowl panel and then into the cabin of the vehicle via a grommet. And I've showed you how to do this in the past with various you know, cameras and external lighting systems and stuff, but here's a quick recap. Right now I'm just routing it through my ditch light here, my ditch light bracket. So we're going from the roof and the solar panel underneath the roof rack along the windshield, just kind of roughly onto the ground for now. And here's the grommet I was talking about before. What I'm gonna do now is expand it to receive two additional 10 gauge wires in addition to these, I think probably 18 gauge, 12 gauge wires. No, these aren't 12 gauge. These are probably something more like 18 gauge uh, camera wires and power wires. So I'm gonna expand this hole and just kind of roughly so, just so that the wires will fit through. And I haven't had any like weather or dust intrusion issues with this at all. But if you really wanna make sure that, you know, no dust intrusion gets in at all, you can just tape around that when you're done. And I'm using a borescope this time to go up and take a look. This one from One Tigris is pretty good, especially for the price. Um, so I'll leave this one linked in the description as well. And you could go check that out if you're looking for a borescope to check your cylinder walls while you're changing spark plugs or inspecting bushings or just don't want to get your head into tight spaces in the future. This one has nice three LED brightness settings and uh, you can kind of take a look around in there instead of burying your head in the floor like I have in the past while feeling around for <laughs> the correct wire, which may or may not happen. So once I found the wire, I just uh, pulled it down and through. And um, don't want to forget to mention, just remove that bottom kick panel piece by taking out that Phillips screw and then pulling down. You see the yellow clips right there. And then you just feed the wire all the way through. And this takes a little bit of time, but take your time with it and make sure you go inside the strut, the hood strut, which I neglected to do the first time and so I had to redo it. Uh, but that was no problem, especially having the borescope there to find the wire after the fact. Now I just have the wires coiled up inside the vehicle. And now if you wanna take a break, this is a good time to do so because everything is weather tight. And temporarily, I've just stuck some vinyl to the windshield to keep the wires from flapping around while I figure out a permanent wire hiding solution. As you can see, I currently have some D-shaped wire hiders that are you know, working pretty well, but they won't fit these big 10 gauge wires. So I may need to either increase the size uh, of those or find a different wire hider solution altogether. But the vinyl wrap works as a good temporary solution while you figure that out. Now this is the right hand side kick panel and I'll zoom out in a second. You have to remove this kind of stopper first by unscrewing it and then you can see where I'm at here. Then you have to pull straight back and out. And to do that, you have to get your plastic interior tools, pop this kick panel up and out, and then pull straight to the rear of the vehicle on that right-hand side kick panel. And there it comes. And you can take it out fully like this to give yourself a little more room. And this is how you're going to route the wires. I usually go behind those uh, metal clips there. That's where I route my aftermarket wiring. For now, just stuff the wires in the back. Uh, I'm going to mount the battery in the second row, and I'm gonna show you my mounting solution in a future video, but for now, we're just going to route the wires to the proper location, and we're gonna hide the wires, route them as cleanly as possible around the uh, OEM plastic clips and stuff. You can go ahead and stick that black kick panel back up, and once you're done routing the wiring, you put this thing back in, this kick panel on the right side back in by pressing straight forward, just the opposite that you did by uh, removing it. So then you grab that uh, stopper and just screw it back in just the same way you took it out. And then you need to get that screw uh, for the black kick panel again and just reinsert that and screw it back in for the final install. And that thing just pulls straight down once the screw is out, so it's really easy. Uh, this kick panel goes in like this where you push it back and then and then you can kind of hammer them down
And that's kind of the final install. I just coiled the wires up behind the front seat and they're just kind of hanging out there. Now it's time for the star of the show to come out. The thing that makes life so easy. All the wiring that I showed you at the beginning of the video that's in my current solar power system is contained between this charge controller and the battery. And it fits in really tight. There's no extra wiring to do. Again, you just plug it straight into your adapter and in there. And again, I am giving you a little hint, a sneak peek at what mount I'm gonna be going with in the future. So you can check that out in advance. Do come with a mount, sort of a bracket that go into the bottom of that assembly, but it's more for drilling straight into wood. All right, so all we need to do now is to connect these guys to these ends. All right, let me connect those to this okay just plug them in and then we can use the dc in charging port to charge this battery with our solar panel so now what i'm doing is just finding the correct length for the wires and then cutting them down now we're going to just strip back a little bit uh, once we're done cutting the wiring and these ones are kind of difficult to strip, so I wouldn't say that using the quick strip tool like this is the best way uh, because you kind of want to get a nice even one because these are like double sheathed. So if you have any suggestions for dealing with wiring like this, go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. But I kind of made do with what I had. And these MC4 connectors work like this. The male side actually goes into the female side, but it's kind of vice versa with the connector itself. Um, so the female side has the male, like, like this, the, the female side plastic connector houses the male side uh, metal connector, if that makes sense. So it's kind of opposite of what you would think. The female connector doesn't, the female metal part doesn't really fit in the female plastic connector, so you'll kind of know it from that, but just so you know, that's uh, what we're doing here. We're finding the proper wire, and we're kind of twisting it up putting the connector in and crimping it down. And please get yourself one of these crimpers. I'm gonna explain it in a little bit in the video, but trying to do this without the crimper is a total nightmare, so don't try. And it looks like a pretty dang good crimp. Oh, I see why you need it. Look at that. It pushes these sides in. Oh, uh, that's why I was having such a hard time earlier. Okay, so like, these things on the top here. So I had, I guessed that this was correct. So the back side goes in, goes in here, and this guy curls the top around and in. See how it curls the top ones in to the wire? Get one of these tools. Don't try to do this without them. <laughs> Trust me. Okay, and let's just put the rest of this one together. You need this backing nut and you need this little crush thing here. Where's this thing go? Uh, opposite. Okay. So it goes like this. All right. Okay. It kind of clicked itself in. Push that guy in. And this should close it all up together. There we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now it's just time to do the positive male side. Again, it's positive male on that side because positive is female on this side. So a lot of it does depend on you and, how, and using your intelligence to make sure that you put the correct connector on the corresponding wires. So just make sure that you keep track of that so that they go together like okay. this. Now I can connect this up, positive and negative. And once you're able to plug into this adapter, all you need to do is plug the Anderson connector straight into the Max Hub. And this plugs right into our charging port. All right. Now all I should have to do is take I don't know if there's 
enough voltage from the sun right now because it's kind of gone down but maybe i'll get something from the reflection and there we go we're charging wow that look at there's the okay we're just plugged straight in there with an anderson connector and then we come out here to these two guys all right and then we go kind of under the seat cover to there and you know it runs through here through the front there and then up from here around here and up to there now I just got to do some zip ties here and that's all you need all right so the Sun went down just a little more now I'm gonna see if I roll into the Sun it starts charging again drive and roll forward all right we are green so I have been charging this battery and it's taken about two days of full sun in, you know, very low sun conditions. Like right now it's, I think the UV index is at like four or something during high noon. So it's taken a little bit to charge up the battery, but I don't think I run any accessories that will deplete this battery very quickly at all. 100 amp hours is 1280 some watt hours. So this is the most bang for buck capacity power station basically you could have. And again, it is totally portable. You can bring it up to the tent with you. Um, you can use this as a power station, an emergency backup home power station, all that sort of stuff. It costs way less money than an actual one kilowatt hour plus battery would on if it was like a full on power station from a name brand. So it's really worth considering for the cost benefit there. And if you just want to run solar power directly into the battery, this is the simplest solution by far. You don't need any separate charge controller or wiring in between the charge controller and the battery, anything like that. This takes care of it all for you and it can result in a really clean setup as you've seen. You have those USB inputs and all that sort of stuff in the Max Hub as well so you can use it right out of the box. And later of course you can add a DC fuse block, you can add a AC inverter, you can add a thousand watt inverter to this thing and run some serious power. Overall, this solution I think makes more sense than my other solar power system. So I'm gonna run them in parallel for a while, but then I'll probably end up selling most of my stuff from the other solar power system that I have and run this one full time because it just makes more sense. And I'll also tie in my existing hood solar panel to the solar panel on the roof as well to make a faster charging system. Overall guys, I think this is a great solution if you're just getting started with solar power and you just want the simplest easiest way to do it this is by far the simplest easiest way to do it there's very limited wiring all you have to worry about is routing wiring through the vehicle and sticking a solar panel on the roof and then plugging it into the max hub on the doctor prepare 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery guys let me know if you have any questions about this setup in the comments we'll see you in the next video